Hey guys, welcome back to Kojo. My name is Alex. And in this video, I want to talk about a question that I get asked very often. So people often ask me, how do you go about creating a real life project? And how do you actually deploy to production? And what happens when people start using it? So what I want to do in this video is I want to introduce you to a project that I've been working on for the past few days. If you go to github.com slash alex996 slash react fancy spinners, you're going to see the repo for this project. If you scroll down to the readme section, you're going to see that it's actually just an NPM package that you can install yourself. So you could use NPM or yarn and you can also reference the files directly from unpackage. Now to use it, you would import a spinner that you want to use. Let's say ellipsis. You would then import the CSS for that spinner and then you can use it as a regular react component. Now there's a bunch of examples for different use cases, like if you want to pull in the files from CDN, if you want to set up a create React app project, or if you want to use server-side rendering as well. There's of course a demo that you could see. Now what I've done is I've deployed this project to GitHub pages. So you could see a demo for every single component, let's say ellipses or ring or ripple. And now the other interesting part is that this project also has a build pipeline. So for one thing, we have a Travis CI setup. So every time I make a commit, and I push the code to my repo, it's going to trigger a pipeline on Travis CI. So this will install all the dependencies. It's also going to lint the code using ESLint. And it's also going to run a few snapshot tests using Jest. It's going to generate the coverage for the test and it's going to push that coverage to coveralls, which you can see over here, we have a several coverage reports for different builds. So every build that we have in a Travis CI is also going to have the associated coverage report on coveralls. And of course, this wouldn't be a real project if you couldn't install it. So if you were to go to your terminal, you could do something like npm install react fancy spinners. And of course, you could also use yarn, but I already have a demo locally. So I would go to my workspace, react fancy spinners demo. And as you can see, it's simply a create react app. So you're going to find the dependency listed in package JSON. Now, if I go to app.js, I've already imported a component from that library. In this case, it's going to be ring and also I had to import the underlying CSS. Now I would use that component as a regular JSX element. So now if I go back to the terminal, I'm going to do yarn start. So now this will start a development server, but you can't really see the spinner. So I'm going to go to app CSS and I'm going to change the background color to just color and then color to background like this. So I'm just going to flip them. If you go back, as you can see, we get the spinner in the middle. And now the other cool thing is that this library is also set up with tree shaking. So let's say I only want to import one component. Let's say the ellipsis. I can import that and put it in JSX. And it's also going to ignore all of the other components as well. And as you can see here, we get the ellipsis component. Now this library is not very sophisticated. There's only a few components that you could import. And of course you could develop it much more. You could also accept different types of properties to the component like let's say sizes, or you could customize the color, for example. But all in all, I think it's a good example for a demo project. We have a build pipeline. We also have code coverage. We already have pretty decent documentation describing how you would go about installing this dependency. So all in all, it's quite an interesting project. And I thought I would walk you guys through the process of creating something like this. And hopefully this will give you an idea how you can set up your own project or library. And I think it's a very useful skill to be able to do that yourself. So I'm actually going to delete this project for now. So let me go back to Travis. I'm going to disable it. And I'm going to go to coveralls and I'm going to do the same thing. So let me go and disable it as well. Now, finally, I'll go to settings and I'm actually going to delete it. So let me delete the repo. Right now that we've done that, without further ado, let's get into it. 